So we've done creating directories, we've done creating files, we've done deleting files, we've done deleting directories. Um, so the next step is how do we actually edit files? We're not really gonna get into a lot of that tonight because like I said, there'll be a whole topic on that starting next week. Um, the general gist is if you're using something like Genie or Gedit, there's a whole bunch of, we, we won't edit any files directly on the command line right now, but if I create a new file, so we'll do like touch my file. Um, if we create a new file and now we wanna edit it, there's a whole bunch of different ways to edit it. Uh, there's programs called editors whose job is to edit files, and you can basically run any of these programs. So gedit's a really basic editor, it's on all of these systems, and it's actually not gonna work, I mean, this'll work, it's gonna pop open a window for us though. So if I do gedit something like my file, you could also do genie here, or emacs if you know how to use emacs. Um, but if I do something like gedit my file, you'll know it's gonna go ahead and open up a screen like this. I'm just gonna type some text, So if I do something like this, I mean, there are, this is just a GUI editor. Uh, you can save it, so on and so forth, and close it again. So now if we do ls, uh, my file pretty much looks exactly the same. You'll actually, gedit creates a backup file every time you save. This is just, it has the tilde after it. This is just essentially a copy of my file before I just made those changes. Um, I come, a lot of editors do this, but you can ignore this. It's just like a backup file. Um, so now I have a file that actually has some contents in it. So the question is, well, how do I view the contents of a text file? There's a lot of different ways to do it. I could just open it up in gedit again uh, and read it that way. That's actually overkill in a lot of situations. Often you just want to like quickly see what's inside a file. So there's a command called cat. It's actually short for concatenate, but it works just fine with one file. If you run cat followed by the name of your file, you will notice that it prints out the contents of the file on the screen. So the cat command is useful if you want to like quickly print out what's in a file. The issue with the cat command is it literally dumps it straight to the screen. So if this file had 100 lines in it, I'm only going to see the very tail end of it. So there's another suite of programs that operate on files called pagers. Um, and what a pager does is it displays the contents of a file, but it does it one page at a time. So the classic pager is a program called more. So if we run more my file, you'll notice that now, well, okay, this isn't a good example because my file is not long enough. Uh, I'm going to do something to make this file longer real quick. Don't worry too much about exactly what I'm doing. We'll get into it here in a sec. So now if I make a file that's a little bit longer, and save it and close it. So now if I do cat something like my file, so it's only showing me the end, right? So I can use a pager, like more, getting back to where I'm going to go. So if I do more my file, you'll notice now it's just displaying the start of the file, and it's saying this is just the first 48%. So I can use uh, the space bar will show me then the rest of the file, or if it were more than one page, hitting the spacebar multiple times would keep showing me one page at a time until I got to the end of the file. When you get to the end of the file, more exits and spits me back out. Uh, the problem with more is you can only kind of go in one direction. You can just go forward through the file. You have no ability to like scroll through or anything like that. So we wrote a better version of more called less. Uh, this is Unix humor for you. 
So if you run less my file, it kind of behaves the same way, only now you can use the arrow keys. So I can scroll up and I can scroll down. I can essentially scroll through the entire file. When I'm done, you need to hit Q to exit. Less, when you view a man page, you're actually using less. Um, the man pages use less behind the scenes. That's what allows you to scroll to the man pages. That's also why you hit Q to exit the man page, because you're really just exiting less. Again, Unix trivia. Um, so, more and less, in reality, everyone uses less. More, again, it's just there for legacy's sake. Um, but if you want to view a long file, but you don't want to like, open it up in a full-blown editor, you just want to read it quickly on your terminal screen, less is the tool for the job. Questions on cat, more or less? Okay, so we've done reading files. Okay, so just kind of revisiting what I did a minute ago, because I want to do it real quick and it's worth showing. Uh, I want to delete this backup file because I have no need for it. Uh, often there'll be a couple of these backup files in a folder. If I do rm star tilde, it's going to delete anything that ends with a tilde. So you can take the star and add other constraints to it, and then the star will just expand to anything that has a tilde after it. So rm star would delete everything, but rm star tilde is only going to delete everything that ends in a tilde. Make sense? I could also delete everything that starts with an m and ends in a tilde by doing rm m star tilde so on and so forth. So the star will just expand to fill whatever constraints you put on either side of it. But in this case, rm star tilde, I run this command all the time because it deletes all those pesky uh, backup files. Again, think before you hit enter. I have a non-trivial number of times. Instead of doing rm star tilde, screwed up and hit enter before I hit the tilde because I'm typing too quickly. And delete everything in my folder, which is great. Uh, it'll give backup, so on and so forth. We'll do another lecture on this later on, but eventually you get into something called using version control systems, which is basically its job is to track every change you make to every file. And then if you do something stupid like delete everything, it's suddenly a whole lot easier to reverse your mistake. Again, an entirely separate lecture on that. You guys probably touched it just a little bit. Uh, Gabe's using GitHub to host a lot of his assignments. GitHub is actually a big version control system. And you're probably not seeing a lot of the what it can actually do, but that's why it exists. It doesn't exist so people can like download zip files from it. It exists actually as a big version control system. Um, and we'll do a session on Git, which is the version control program behind it uh, at a later date. 